Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals are a new set of 17 commitments that governments are entering into that cover a very broad spectrum of human activity and its interactions with the planet. So they include goals on ending poverty, reducing inequality between and, uh, within and between countries, addressing environmental degradation in oceans, forests, um, uh, land, uh, so a real spectrum of social, environmental and economic issues. Um, they're a new framework that's been negotiated by government, so this is an intergovernmental agreement and it frames collective action for the world's countries over the coming 15 years, so this has a time horizon up to 2030. Um, the 17 goals each include a set of targets which measure de progress in more detailed terms towards the overarching objective set out in the, in the goals, so it's a really comprehensive framework. Well, they're important because they represent the highest level of agreement among governments on what their shared ambition is for change, for a transition over the next 15 years. I think there are a number of characteristics of the SDGs which are really significant and represent a, a, a change, a progress uh, on the previous uh, framework, which was the Millennium Development Goals that have been in place from, from 2000 up till the current year. The first change is that they're universal. So they provide ambitions, targets, imperatives for change for all countries, not just uh, for um, the poorest countries and for countries that are giving uh, development assistance. So they're much more universally relevant. The second is that they're framed around sustainability. They're framed around effective use of natural resources, recognising the vulnerability of ecosystems and people's reliance on natural resources as a critical factor, which was uh, not reflected at all in the, um, in the Millennium Development Goals. It was compartmentalised in one goal and not reflected across the whole framework. Um, I think the third way in which they're really significant is that they've been framed as an integrated whole. They're not silos which can be addressed in isolation from one another, it's a package. And the goals very strongly re reflect the interrelations between progress on each of the issues and the, the fact that you can't achieve progress on one area without um, achieving progress on others. So that, that also reflects a, a much more mature uh, framework that, that requires action across a spectrum of areas. So what happens next from where we are now is firstly that governments will confirm this package, this goal framework, at a Head of Government Summit in New York in September 2015. Um, and all things going to plan, that will essentially entail rubber stamping the framework that's been negotiated without reopening any of it. The next phase will be more detailed work on the indicators that sit underneath each of the targets. And although that gets a bit wonky for us policy nerds, Actually, there's huge significance in that. The detailed things of what's measured in order to track progress had huge significance in the MDG process and is really the, the, where the, de the devil lies in the, in the specifics of what constitutes progress towards these very broad goals. Um, a third area that's significant is going to be the um, COP21 of the UN Climate Convention in Paris at the end of the year. And clearly there are huge overlaps between this agenda around sustainability and the more binding commitments governments will enter into in terms of um, energy policy and practice, in terms of their commitments to reducing emissions. So that's a, a huge piece of the, of the broader puzzle. Um, so those are three major areas. Obviously one of the, the, the overarching challenges is implementing this new framework and that's the ultimate um, uh, next step, you know, so it's fine for governments to negotiate a framework and to come up with a nice rhetorical package, but what they actually do and what they change using this framework is the real acid test of, of how much impact and how much influence it has. Will the SDGs actually make a difference? Um, I think one of the challenges in that question is the gap between the rhetoric of this framework and the hard choices, the hard prioritisation that's required actually to achieve progress towards this goal set. So in order to, um, in order to pro promote change, they will require commitment of significant resources. They will require um, changes in policy, changes in regulation, 
uh, changes in mindset from, uh, from a whole spectrum of actors in order to translate the, the framework into something much more concrete. I think as a point of reference they're, they're really valuable and, and not having them would create, make it much harder to have that kind of major change uh, put into effect at different levels. So if they set a framework for a transition from where we are now towards much greater sustainability, much greater equity in resource use over the next 15 years, that's a good start. So do I have a favourite goal? Um, I think an interesting one is the commitment to reducing inequality between and within countries. Um, this hasn't been reflected as a as a sort of overarching target in any other international agreements that I'm aware of, but it perhaps points to there's a there's a proposition tied up in that goal, which is that uh, growing inequality, growing gaps between the richest and the poorest in itself is unsustainable and drives poverty, drives uh, over-exploitation of natural resources. I guess that proposition has yet to be tested, and I know the government in the UK doesn't buy into that analysis, but for me it's a, it's a quite provocative inclusion in this goal set, and, uh, and I think there's a lot that could be done with that principle if it's translated into harder actions, commitments, requirements for change, so that's the one I'd pick.